welcome to your Monday download. If you're getting tired of hearing about Connie Fernandez and her ability to postpone foreclosure auctions, it's because it's not your short sale file that's being saved. Connie is at it again this week, two more postponements for us. And, uh, and one of them in particular, she got postponed, actually she got it canceled and even convinced the negotiator to look at an offer from a buyer that had been declined because it was too low. Uh, he's gonna take a look at it again and we might even get an approval. So not only postponing uh, foreclosure auctions, but even resurrecting buyers that we thought were dead. So way to go, Connie. Um, all of us, especially those agents who are having their transactions saved, appreciate it. This is like six weeks in a row that Connie Fernandez has been my lead shout out. I have another shout out today, uh, network agent Mike Icorn. shout out to him, he just had a baby boy, congratulations Mike, Gabriel Icorn, uh, born here in the last couple weeks, congratulations, we're so happy for Mike, if you've got a cross sale with Mike and he's a little groggy on the phone, give him a break because he's got a brand new baby boy. So we're super happy. This is the first time that I'm aware of that we've had a network baby born. So we're all totally stoked. Super excited for Mike. And um, so congratulations. I had a, uh, a question on HAVA. had an agent call me up. And that's um, what I'm asking you to do if you have a client that you think needs to go HAVA. Call me up. Let's talk about it. Uh, it might be the right thing to do for them. In this situation, we determined within 60 seconds that the client wasn't even going to qualify for Hoffa, so let's not waste our time. Um, but this is that was the the reason I want to bring this up is because this will be helpful to you. When your client is your seller is declined for a loan modification, find out why. What was the reason? If that reason was because they didn't qualify for the Making Homes Affordable program because it wasn't a primary residence or the, it was a jumbo loan that was too big for the program or their debt to income ratio wasn't what it needed to be. Basically they make too much money. Any of those reasons that they didn't get the loan modification is an automatic decline on HAFA too. Let's not wait 30 days for the bank to tell us that that's declined. Let's go the classic uh, short sale method. So I thought that was helpful and would be helpful to you in a situation where you've got a client says, hey, I didn't get my loan modification, they declined me for it, dig in, ask some questions. Oh, what was the decline for? Oh, because we make too much money. If you make too much money for a loan modification, you're gonna make too much money for HAFA too. Remember, HAFA and HAMP, the modification part of uh, making homes affordable, they're basically one and the same. HAFA is just kind of the back end of it. Okay, let's talk about buyers. Boy. Uh, I made a prediction late April that we would be having buyers bail out as the tax credit neared its end, and that was proved to be true. Um, and we also found May has been a really interesting month because we have had seven now approved short sales where the buyers were either gone or couldn't perform, uh, some of them surely having to do with the tax credit. But um, anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit weird. Now that you've got buyers on your short sales, uh, for those buyers who were under contract prior to April 30th, I'm sure that you've already positioned them and said you can't, if you need the tax credit, do not put an offer in on this property because we can't guarantee anything. Short sales are notorious for going longer than they, uh, we all expect them to. So don't put your eggs in this basket if you need that $8,000 tax credit. So I'm sure none of the people that are buying the properties you have listed as short sales right now uh, need or want that tax credit. Well. Let me let you in on a little secret. They all want it. They absolutely do. Whether or not they have to have it, I'm, I'm sure they don't, and we hope that they don't in case they don't get it, uh, but they all want it. And I understand that. I mean, 8,000 bucks is 8,000 bucks. I don't care who you are. I mean, it's, it may be chump change to Bill Gates, but he's still 8,000 bucks I'm sure he's gonna take. He's not gonna not take it if somebody's offering it to him. So here's the reality. Uh, this is the last week of May. Most clients are looking at the calendar saying, hey, if I don't get an approval by the end of this week, I'm not going to get my 8000 bucks. I'm going to be really irritated and frustrated that this short sale is taking so long, not just because it's taking so long, because now I'm out, out of $8,000 because this bank won't respond. Um, so that's one thing to consider. Uh, and we're going to talk about that and how we can potentially get around that or at least up our chances of getting around that. 
Here's something I'll throw out. If a bank is countering your short sale on price and it's not a lot, like it's $5,000, my recommendation if your buyer is gonna qualify for that $8,000 tax credit is that you don't dink around um, with that counter offer. You recommend that they accept that because if you dink around with the counter offer, the likelihood of you, your transaction going beyond that June 30th date skyrockets versus just saying, yeah, we'll take it, give us the letter. And so they don't get 8,000 bucks, they get $3,000. Um, so that's just a, a, a random thought in a situation where there's a counter offer. Make sure that the buyer is really thinking about what they're doing by not accepting a counter from the bank, if it's a small amount. If it's a $10,000 counter, then it kind of doesn't matter because they're not gonna make up that 10,000 bucks. Unless, if you think about it this way, the $10,000 counter offer is really still a good deal on the property and they get the $8,000 tax credit, they may still want to consider that. So just look at it kind of really laterally in, in all the options before um, we go back into negotiations with the bank because counter offers mean they have to go back to investors and it can add, it can add time. It can add a month or more sometimes. So um, consider that. So, all right, so your, tax, your buyer wants their tax credit and we're at the last week of the month of May and most of them are thinking if we don't get an approval by the end of this month, then boom, we're not going to get this $8,000. Maybe I need to start shopping around for another house. You know, it's not really that great a deal. Whatever their psychology is and the problems that may come out of that. Here's a tip that I want to give you. If the buyer is serious about getting this $8,000, have them call in a favor to their loan officer, the, the guy or the gal that is doing their loan, and say, hey, I know that we don't have an approved short sale yet, but I really need you to start processing this loan and underwriting this loan so that the only condition that's left uh, in the next few weeks is the appraisal. Because I don't want to come out of pocket for money on an appraisal, but here's the deal. 30 days is what they need to process the entire loan. That lender, as you well know, especially those who listened to our conference call with Aaron Tilbury on, on lenders, realize that the lenders look at this and say, you know, until we have an approved short sale, this really isn't even a full contract to me, so I'm going to do nothing on this. I'm going to, I'll pre-qualify them and say, yeah, if their information is what they say it is, then they're qualified, but um, I'm not going to do anything else. And that's, the problem is, is that we may get an approval mid-June, and if that and the buyer had been moving this forward, we may be able to close their loan in two weeks and get this thing funded and still get their 8000 bucks. So have them move it forward. What they're really asking, or if you're the buyer's agent and you're wanting to do this on their behalf, what you're asking this lender to do is to process the loan, underwrite the loan, and get back to you with, an, with docs being conditioned only for a satisfactory appraisal. They've already looked at title. They've already done all of their underwriting and verified all the stuff. And the only thing they need is a satisfactory appraisal in order to send out docs. If that's the only condition, we can rush through an appraisal. We might be able to get docs out in a week. It could be the last week of June. We could slam this thing through and get it done. So you're going to have to call in a favor, though, because these guys don't want to work for free, and that's how they're looking at it. They're saying, you know, this isn't even approved. I'd be working for free on this. Uh, but if you have a good relationship with them and you really appeal to their good nature, then hopefully they'll be able to actually process that so that we could do a, a rush deal if mid-June you know, one to two weeks before the end of the month, we get an approval back. Let's try and get these guys 8,000 bucks. I mean, the government's giving, giving it away. We might as well try and help them get it. So those are my thoughts. Um, that's all I have for, to, for today and for the week. If you have questions or you want to strategize on a transaction, I've been calling some of you that have um, properties with no offers on them yet to strategize on how to get some offers. Um, call into the office, send me an email. Let's get on the phone because we, I want to help you um, be successful in your short sale business. And part of that is us talking about your deals, talking about your transactions and your sellers and what we can do to make them uh, successful. So have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for tuning in and uh, see ya.